Good afternoon and welcome to Die Dragon Die Presents the Legends Campaign, episode 43. I'm your DM and host, Marty. I'm joined by Ahmed, Mark, and John this week. How's everyone do uh, doing? And let me unmute you guys. Uh, there we go. So that you can be heard. Ahmed is calling in from a hotel room. Uh, we figured out that uh, in, in a sort of our setup uh, before we started the stream that um, turning his camera off means that the hotel Wi-Fi will allow him to hear us uh, most of the time. It was pretty bad there for a moment. But how's everyone doing? Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. good. Uh, first day of work yesterday. It was pretty, pretty fun. I didn't get a lot of sleep, so I was pretty tired. But uh, I got to play with uh, with the Vive for like four and a half hours. That's cool. And, uh, that's amazing. Every other VR system, that's just incredible. So but the Vive is where it's at. Play? It's where it's at. It's it's there were there were some moments where like my brain and my body were not agreeing with what was actually happening and <laughs> my brain took over and I started to like I started to feel my legs trying to correct for movement that wasn't happening and I was like this is incredible. <laughs> Mark Mark are are you in a closet or the basement? I am in the basement wondering why does John get to play video games at work and I don't? <laughs> this is not <laughs> <laughs> High tech video games at that. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. You know what I did? I went through a technical manual for a fucking control system for a hydraulic drive. That sounds exciting. No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> I flew around the in, I started over because and, like, I, I absorbed, I absorbed <laughs> nothing. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. Yeah. Also, I was a space pirate and I fought a bunch of drones with an energy shield and a laser. It's pretty cool. Um, I got oh, yeah, a, industrial things. I got fun. a four-hour sleep nap right before game. Uh, before that, I was just up in the middle of the night, so I played RimWorld. Um, where, um, basically, I created a, a group of seven colonists that were all cannibals, and we started out at the lowest <laughs> tech. Yeah, it was like a trait, I, I, like a random trait. So I, I went in and, and found a an, uh, mod that allowed me to edit the characters. Uh, the funny thing that happened in episode two, because I've already done this, was, um, well, we constructed this grand temple. Like, we're living in huts, and we've got this marble temple, and the altar is a butchering table, and the butchering table is set up to only butcher people. Of course. Well, uh, the first group that we blooded in, in the temple of eating um, um, was a raid, and the leader of the raid was the mother of two of the characters that I had. Sometimes the game just throws relationships at you, like like from, <laughs> from other tribes. She accidentally died because she wandered into the kill box at the front gate of our, of, of our building. So the first person that my cannibals in RimWorld slaughtered was the mother of two of the cannibals that were there. <laughs> now, the, nice. the positive modifier of, of eating raw flesh for cannibals is like plus 20. The negative modifier for eating raw foods, minus 7 for some reason. And then their mom died was minus 8. So there was a net positive bonus. <laughs> from <laughs> mother. <laughs> I, I don't think this is what they intended. I think they. I think it's supposed to be bad to be, to be cannibals, but. Uh, <laughs> you've all, I've always got you with me. <laughs> right. uh, I so, feel terribly <laughs> guilty, but mom is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Garfield was online when we were doing that. We were we were laughing at, uh, <laughs> but she's so delicious. Uh, and the cannibals go directly for the food. So I've got, like, farms and everything set up and stockpiles of food, but the human meat, I don't even have a chance to cook it. They go straight for it, and they and they, and they they eat it all up. Uh, it's hilarious, because some of the people that join our colony of Honeycomb... Um, <laughs> what a terrible name. That's a terrible name for a colony. Welcome to Honeycomb Farm. <laughs> it's, it's like, Welcome it's, to yes. Honeycomb. People are running to, like, Honeycomb to try to escape whatever hells that they came from, only to realize that... Hey, they've got a temple. It's kind of nice in here. Oh, they must slaughter animals at the at the head of the temple. Yes. Uh, yeah, the other colonists are starting to get low morale from being around a bunch of butchers, uh, which they may go crazy and break, and then we'll just have to eat them. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's a really fun game. It's been out for a long time. Uh, it's still an alpha, but uh, yeah. So it's that's... basically like Dwarf Fortress, except prettier. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. So you can you can go watch uh, you can go watch that. I think my, the videos are still up on the on the Twitch channel. I'll eventually paste them to YouTube. Ahmed, how was your week? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> that well, good, huh? Kill, that well, let's good. just kill stuff. Let's just kill stuff. 
I, I remember it's not good to talk about work here, so let's just let's just play game. <laughs> okay, so why don't we do a recap of what happened last game? I imagine you don't have uh, your your special drawings, so that's fine. Um, I've been playing around with it with the uh, with the panels for the game, so if something's a little bit off, just let me know. Uh, <laughs> here comes the boom! Look at that, look at that, Adam. Adam is <laughs> chit chatting with us already. Um, all right, so. Last game was called There, There, My Child. Um, the Festival of Strength was interrupted by the Grim Harvest, an event where a deity reaps the souls of the young and old alike. Lemio spies upon the deity, and the heroes of Aegis confront a, uh, a group of hostile psychopomps that have come for Morfar Warlock, who is, uh, who is revealed that he is extreme in age. Kings and champions arrive in the Voslandic capital of Vossen Saga for the Festival of Strength. While the Day of Mourning interrupted the festival, the festival's back on. Um, we're not jumping ahead. Uh, we're still in the day where you guys fought all the psychopomps and then re uh, and then protected <clears throat> Morfar Warlock. I think some of you did get a rest in. Um, like before you went back, but uh, um, uh, your mythic points have not reset. Okay. Like yeah, so you initially defended more far. You did. You went back and rested an hour at the t at a temple and at the uh, at the shrine. But then you went. Then you returned back to the um, the Bubark Arch, where the uh, Morfar has his library and where the king's castle is. And right. you met you met Trud. And then eventually you were you were able to lure the creatures out. Um, actually, no, it was Morfar that cast etherealness on you, and you were able to go into the ethereal plane. Uh, yeah. Just a just a rules clarification: the way that I've been playing when um, when un, when incorporeal beings are in stone and kind of attack you from a square where they're inside stone, they're supposed to have a fifty percent mischance against you. So I I checked up that that rule mark after you. Uh, um, these things Sorry, were high enough I level that they, they 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 could have had like a feat to avoid that. They were like CR thirteens, but uh, regular shadows will have a fifty fifty chance if they if they do that. Um, uh, okay. If if they do that sort of cowardly tactic. So I did look at that after the game. Uh, okay, so it's the, nearing the end of the day of Elder. Um, you guys have defeated the two shades that came through the portal, the ones that you saw anyways. And uh, Morfar is, uh, is happy with you guys. He, I think he also gave you a song for Vos, Vosgard. I think you guys yes. know how to get back to Vosgard. Yes, he did. Very important yep. information. Yep. And the king's going crazy is kind of what, you, yeah, kind of yeah. what you've deduced. So where does... So... The... So, so indirectly, Remy might be responsible for taking down an entire kingdom. Yes. What kind of XP is that? <laughs> um, Stop leveling your villainous NPC. <laughs> I think for now we'll keep Remy on par with the party. Mark. He is an anti-hero. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep we'll keep Remy. There's on no par. room for anti-heroes in Paladin Town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, he's he's definitely on the blacker side of the shade scale. Just a bit. Why do you always hate these characters, Mark? <laughs> do it! Mark next time it's like, next characters. time Mark introduces a character, my character's just gonna go, and I kill him. <laughs> there, I've solved a lot of problems. <laughs> a lot of indefinite future vague problems. Uh, Alright, so you guys are kind of hanging out at Morfar... Warlock's library, or where where are you guys gonna go? I forget exactly where we we left off. Uh, Al Altigar doesn't really want to hang around the library of evil shades. So he's probably gonna go back to the festival. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it's late at night after you guys uh, had had. Uh, um, it's later in the day after you'd fought the the psychopomps. Yep. So you're going to head back across the Bobark Arch? Yep. I guess Uker, mm, yeah. Uker will follow. Mm. Festival um, back on, says Uker. Yeah, sure thing. Tomorrow will be a right, good there's, day. 
there there's the other the silver or the gold armored um, fella that I told you might be a gold dragon. What problems can killing everything not fix? <laughs> <laughs> Good point, Kenny. Good point. And this is D and D where killing is almost a default answer to things. <laughs> I do award XP for role playing. Um, you were asking a question, Ahmed. Uh, right, I was just saying. Uh, there's the. Uh, yeah. And. This isn't good. Yeah. Go. Lurkrick and Obron are kind of shitting themselves dealing with them, so once we're done with Yes, we'll go deal with the gold dragon, I'm assuming that's what you're saying. <laughs> oh, I want to uh, gold dragon, very respected on uh, Gazarija. It's because of the whiskers, says, says uh, Uker. Oh, he seems a very he seems very um, bi- Oh. You Just must think because... very highly of dwarves, too, if that's your big qualifier. <laughs> <laughs> very wise. And then I, I'm, I'm assuming uh, Lemio's warning, I think I overheard Ahmed say uh, yeah. uh, that he, he seems pretty violent. Okay, it feels like the group of you are going to go back towards the embassy. Um, yeah. And you do, um, you do see that the many ships that uh, uh, that high that the King Trud had brought, including the red-headed dragon ship. Um, once back at the at the um, the King's Hall, which is kind of like a place where all the visiting nobles uh, stay. I thought I created a token for him. Yes, I did. You can see Oberon pacing and, and fretting. Lokrik is sitting at a table staring at a man who's uh, who's actually got a bunch of weapons out on the table and seems to be tending to them. He's tall. He's he's six foot yeah, six. Fuck doesn't even have a squire. Uh, six foot six. He's in he's in opulent. Opulent, ostentatious, gold-trimmed armor with with red. There, are, there are actually some gems in parts of his armor, uh, <laughs> sparkling red rubies, a a wondrous plume that you don't know what exotic bird or beast he took it from, uh, and it appears that he is a uh, some sort of spear fighter. There's a very impressive, almost um, goldish metal. Um, long spear that is on the table. He also fights with it with a shield though. <clears throat> That's okay, kinda weird. Yep. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure there's a path that allows you to do that. But... Two feet will let you take care of that. Yep. Shield focus and there's a thing that lets you use spear long spears with shields. <clears throat> oh greetings, says uh says Uker. <clears throat> The man, the man glances up at you guys as you're walking in, and then continues what he's doing. Galath is first and foremost to see the armored guy with his clearly knightly. Yeah, give me a uh, a perception check to see if you guys notice something about him. Okay. Perception. That's my favorite skill. <laughs> Um, Marty, do you want me to roll that as well? Uh, yeah, I, 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 Mr. Yeah, Gallif, I see black and white, <laughs> nothing else. Right, plus three perception, uh, whatever you've got. Yeah, it's like plus four. Uh, I got a 19. Okay, 19. Uh, 57. <laughs> wow, oh, that's pretty good. Uh, okay. There's a chance he could he could he could break this. Um, let's see. You can see his future. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to see if if you see through his disguise. One d twenty plus thirty six plus ten for. Ooh. Fifty seven. And what did you roll? Fifty seven. 
The so DC using... is his disguise check, so yes, uh, give me a knowledge arcana, uh, Lemmy. Yo. Kill him now! <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Okay, knowledge arcana. Okay. Yeah, ten. Well, ten is enough to identify the creature's type. So, there's something wrong with his eyes, and you caught for a moment, there was a brief flash of his, when he was looking up at you guys, that he had slitted eyes like that of a dragon. So, you, so you, you're seeing through his, um, you're guessing some sort of magical, um, disguise. You're the only one that seems to see it. The rest of them are standing around looking at him, uh, well, appra I'll roll appraising my, his weapons. I'll roll my um, knowledge nobility. Find out what's going on with this guy. Sure. Hmm. Twenty-one. Let me poops a little bit. Okay. Um, <laughs> poops a little bit. His heraldry has nothing to do with Nalbrin. Okay. Um. Although. There, there are insignias on him that suggest that he is that he is important, and I, I would say, Gallus' best guess is that this guy is royalty of some kind. Okay, interesting. Knowledge nobility on his crests. Sure. So I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do like Gallus' perspective from. Uh, uh, Gallus has more perspective than just now, right now, but yeah. Oh yeah, Vosgard. The, this guy, this guy also, fuck, doesn't seem to be, um, doesn't seem to be related to Vosgard in any way. Okay. Let's get get those ones out of the way. <laughs> and then, and then that's Ahmed, how it works. I rolled, I rolled a nine. A nine. Um, Perception's my high point. Everything else, low point. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> um, Lemio thinks that he's the he's he's some sort of royalty of humankind, but clearly he's not human. Yep. Well, not clearly. You just just caught the 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 brief flicker of of uh, his spell, betraying his true form. He's been at it for a while, cleaning his weapons. And we're just in an inn, right? Like, he's got every right to be here? <laughs> well, it's it's a drinking hall that in the upper floors there are bedrooms uh, and, and rooms for you guys to stay in. And the, the major drinking hall belongs to, uh, belongs to the High King. But this is the place that you guys have been squatting for months. <laughs> Basically eating and drinking and staying for free. Now you guys did pay for a big party, but that that food and drink is long gone. Long gone. Yeah. yeah. So you've been staying at uh, at like basically on the expense of the high king. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, he he has apparently any he may have a right to be here. The high king doesn't seem to come down and like micromanage <laughs> who stays here. It seems to be important people have come. You haven't seen the ambassador to um, uh, Crucible, though. Crucible. Yeah, yeah in, in your downtime. Up. Yeah, you haven't seen him and his kobolds. They haven't been around. Which I mean... Altgar uh, stands next to Lokrik. Yeah, I mean, Lokrik <laughs> has his axe. His axe is live, and it's on the table. You could, you could definitely feel that there's friction um, in the 20 feet of, of the long table where the king is sitting at one end, and... <laughs> And this this warrior is sitting uh, side face to the king. So if the tables like he's sitting off to the side, facing yeah. uh, perpendicular to where Lokrik's facing. Lokrik is definitely looking at him. And then Oberon's fidgeting in the background and has a wand in his hand. Uh, fretting would probably be a better word for it. And you are the heroes of ages. And you, uh... <laughs> so Galath of Kilbrath, <clears throat> he offers a bow. It's, it's a perfect thing to do with someone of higher station. Yep, the, the, the guy's still sitting, so I'll give you, I'll give a uh, partial prone condition to him. Um, he, he, he nods, he nods to, to Galath. Uh, Uker of Gazarija, I believe you're here for 
A festival of strength. Mm. And he, he kind of takes a pose. He raises an eyebrow to, uh, um, to Uka. I am not here for the festival. I am here to win the festival. To add it to a long line of victories that prove... <clears throat> he sighs like he's almost tired of, of explaining this. That prove that I am better. If you're looking to prove you're the strongest one there is, you're gonna lose. <laughs> then why have a festival if the outcome is already decided? Well, I know. We're kind of curious who the second place guy is. Let me laugh at that. <laughs> now it tries not to laugh. <laughs> yeah, it's, a good, it's a good answer. I didn't expect him to answer that one. <laughs> That was a good comeback, and then that was a really good comeback. <laughs> All right. I was told that this is a non-violent competition. Oh, festival of strength, not fighting, Suzuka. Well, it's supposed to be, but uh, some people can't seem to get that through their heads. But uh, they get dealt with pretty quick. Is magic permitted? Uh, Uker? Well, I think Uker, like, part of Uker's thing is he drinks a bunch of potions and becomes... Yeah, strong. I assume, so, I assume, I assume it is. I assume, yes. Oh, anyone can bring whatever advantage they, they have. Muscle, potion, spell, it does not matter. It's like a it's like a Russian bodybuilding competition where. Come on, Yuri, pump yourself up. Yeah. How shrunken are your balls? <laughs> I, I have none. I was, I was watching. I have not seen them in, in 15 Rocky years, and I'm so angry. <laughs> apparently, in Rocky IV, Sylvester Stallone asked Rolf, or uh, Dolph Lundgren to actually try to hit him, and he hit him so hard that the hospital thought that he got hit by a car and insurance wouldn't pay out until they saw a video of what happened. Buff <laughs> yeah. Lundgren's a kickboxing champion. Yeah. And yeah. he's huge. Yeah. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone's like a bodybuilder and he's not Yeah, huge. yeah. But he's <laughs> the height of his career he still hit him so hard. <laughs> like, yeah, we think he got hit by a car. Yeah, he seems, to, he seems really unperturbed about... Uh, um, Altagar kind of breathing down his neck, kind of towering over him. We already told you there's no need for weapons. There is always need for weapons. You should know this, dwarf. The Oberon's just freaking out, like he's fidgety and and you guys ignore Oberon. Right. See, this is this is why it's important to be a paladin with low perception checks. You never know how much danger you're actually in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if I can see that the presence, my presence, bothers you. I shall allow you, young ones, your rest. But know that I intend to win this competition. I only best of luck to you. <laughs> I only, I only hope that the trophy is worth the effort. Oh, we've got good trophy and uh, a great surprise at end of festival. <laughs> May the gods bless you in your attempt. Um, May the strongest man win. Zon, Zon is sorry, is Zongren? The gods have forsaken us all. It's not too, it's not too late for that. Um, Zangrin, can, can I ask you a question? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how much time you've got, but I'd love to hear about your travels. You seem to have travelled a lot. Um, I, I myself, um, uh, I'm a, I am a stomaton priest. So I use you travel through Yig, see other worlds. I, I'd love to know if um, of other ways that you've travelled, other places you've travelled. 
Okay, if that if if you if that if you have the time for that, it'd be fantastic. If not, I understand. You mean a diplomacy check? Sure. Uh, do I get any bonuses at all? I can aid since I've been polite. Sure. So I auto aid to get two. Can I aid with an intimidate? <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. Uh, no. <laughs> Good cop, bad cop. <laughs> Good being aged, do I get? It sounds like one. One? Uh, anything from being ages? No. Why would there? He thinks that's a joke. So did uh, a lot of dragons. 30, 30, 30, 36. Uh, <clears throat> Diplomatic. 36. I do not travel by way of the tree any longer. Uh, right, I assume um, the song gates, is that correct? Okay, he, he nods just ever so perceptibly. He's scrutinizing Lemmy. Where yes. can where they lead to, and and which uh, you know where they exist and things like that. I, I know of a few places. Would you mind if I chat with you and, and just know where you've gone? Because it'd be fantastic for me to know where they exist. I'll tell you everything you need to know about this world if you need to know anything. And trade that information. Perhaps something else. Perhaps something else. All right. It seems to be as much as you're going to get out of him at this point in time. The a, a maybe. Okay. At, it, at first, it looked like he wasn't. He was just going to leave and not give you anything. But you you uh, convinced him. Maybe. He rises up. He collects his weapons. He gives the room a nod, and then and then strides out. Galif offers a polite little bow, sort of thing. Oh, I thought he was never going to leave, says Slokrick. Yes, he was quite rude, especially when he first arrived. I, I... and he looks to Lemmy like over. Some his... distant royal family member, not a, not from this world though. Very interesting. Did you see the sigils that were on his armor? It's what gave it away. Who is this guy? He's one of the survivors from Crucible. There what, was one, a... of the, one of the elves? Didn't look like an elf to me. No. One of the the family... The, the... Sit Easy. down Take before you pass out. Good <laughs> <Take a> breath. <laughs> Oberon sits down. And they, uh, Loker kind of pushes a bowl of, of wine, uh, watered down wine in front of him and gets him to drink. Wait, you guys, you guys didn't see it? Oh, that was a dragon, right? Yes, let me, yes. It's, it's quite small to be a dragon. Um, no, you could, it was just, it was just magic illusion. It was like a disguise. Yeah, he had a spell basically to let him disguise himself. But well, he's I, very good at it. But I, I can see three his, his eyes. Wait, didn't you say that woman we met on the road was a dragon as well? Uh, right, yeah, that was another one. Uh, they were different there. This is one of the gold dragons. There was a family of them, a clan, I believe they call them. Uh, and they, they, they ruled over and protected Crucible, at least until the arch traitor um, um betrayed them and, and, and slew many and then began conquering Crucible, lighting entire continents of, of flame. Oh, that might explain why he's so miserable. <laughs> um, this is actually very interesting. We could we could probably use his help. <clears throat> hey, Uka. Yeah. Yeah, your competition open the dragons? That don't seem fair somehow. <laughs> oh. It's open the giants, apparently. I don't open, see how that's... Open to all that are strong. Perhaps we will have to see who is in third place. <laughs> um... Right, right, guys, what, guys, I just want to say something again. He hates Shimarax, right? And he's well, from Crystal? This betrayal happened almost three centuries ago. Maybe a little bit before. More like three and a half, gives uh, Lokrik. It did take time for Shimarax <coughs> to begin his conquest. Right. But, um... Right, but if, if there is a bit of grudge, 
we could probably use that if we let him. If we find out, maybe we can get information. If we let him know, if we know that he doesn't like a shamrock. I recognize fall. some sigil um, on his armor. I think somehow oh, he was from Gazarija. Uh, it's not really possible. <coughs> um, well, he did say he doesn't travel the tree anymore. He might be from Crucible, but did some getting about. You know what I'm saying? These these gold well, I, I, these these gold dragons that survived. They were not the rulers. They were the families of the rulers. They were the warriors, and now they don't have masters. Um, the word Ronin comes to mind. Oh, Ronin. Uh, not not. A Gazarijan word. Not a Kunian, but close. He's, uh, um... We would call them knight errants. It's something akin to what I am now, in fact. Really, well, we just call them unemployed where I'm from. Lokrik slaps your arm at that. He likes your joke. Being a knight is not employment. Call it. It's a duty. It's not the same thing. These lordless gold dragon knight errants um, are said to have spread out into the many worlds that the song gates connect connect to and um uh well they're not exactly the shining true knights that they once were some of them actually became lowly mercenaries and um uh, more concerned with their own self-aggrandizement than the goodness of others losing a um, world would does affect people, says Lokrik. Uh, I, I remember a couple of things that he said to me, or that I recall when I was here earlier. He said, it's for the master. I don't know if I understand what's his motivation, because perhaps we could use him. If he wants to prove he's the strongest, if he's the best, who else? Who's a better target than a Shimmerax? <laughs> you all know what I'm getting at. If they were so strong, why didn't they stand against the Shimadax? Why didn't they fight? Well, they, they probably did, but couldn't stand up to them. Mm. So we should keep that in mind. If hey. that, depending on what we learn in the, the Festival of Strength tomorrow, how strong you know, that dragon well, Shimadax is. Shimadax is on our list, our side, right? Um, perhaps also other information I could try to learn from him is anything you can tell me about Crucible and how to get to it. Maybe he knows another way. Right? Perhaps. Well, we we know the way that the dwarves went, and then we know the song Crucible. How many more ways do you want? The more information I can get about anything, the better. I always find uh, you can make a better, better judgment about... Hmm. You've probably got to the end of the festival. Then we're going to be on our way, am I right? Yeah. Better than information. What if we get him to fight with us? That's what I was. That's what I'm trying to do. Um, I'll Wait, tell you what. Trying to get in a fight with him? <laughs> no. no. To fight with us. To fight with us. Maybe we must fight him to get him to fight with us. <laughs> uh, that's not a good idea. There's a lot of people around. Yeah, someone could get hurt. <laughs> oh, it's true. But, and if he's the kind that would do that, I don't think we want him fighting beside us. It's also a good point, but if he holds a grudge against the Shimarax or whatever, this dragon trader, and we also need to go to Crucible, perhaps there's some common cause to be found there. He seems uh, a little, uh, if I might say, I know I'm new here, but Seems like the kind of guy who's used to getting his way and gets upset when he doesn't. So if we got him with us, odds are we're doing things his way or nothing's getting done. A temporary alliance of convenience, perhaps. And it's worth thinking of. Adam's Adam's uh, not in at this at the moment. I think he's traveling with his wife, Kenny. And then Ahmed's in a hotel room and turning off the, the video actually makes his uh, bandwidth a little bit better. So Ahmed's still there. Let me see if I can put Ahmed's face. Um. I am here. Put my face on glory screen. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's see. Let's just grab Ahmed's happy face. <laughs> From 
that panel and then we'll paste it on this panel and then we'll adjust it and stick it behind there we go we've, we've got a a happy Ahmed token. <laughs> I love that picture. That's, it just makes me smile. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> at, least, at least we've we've got a uh, a picture. So cheerful. Yeah, so cheerful. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm just role playing Uker uh, for for um, uh, <clears throat> someone else will have to role play him in combat though. Okay, so I think um, the item voted for uh, Mark. I think the um, you guys um, spend a night at the um, at the at the embassy, the drinking hall of the High King. Yet another night in Valsen Saga. Um, that night you have dreams of dragons, <laughs> and perhaps maybe small fits of nightmares of fighting. Death. Into hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lemio, Lemio tosses and turns, dreaming of hell. I'm the baby cuddled in her arms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my child, there, there. Uh, morning comes. It's sort of an overcast day, but uh, um, Uker proclaims that the light was peeking through the clouds, giving that, uh, oh, 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 suggesting oh, 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 oh. that there is hope. <laughs> oh. And um, the festival strength of ba is back on. We'll say that there are, what, three different types of strength competitions. One is um, lifting, one is throwing things, and the other one is actually competitions against other people. Um, I think Galath is still in the running for throwing things. Um, or, or crushing. King, King Trud has joined the competition as well, um, and a lot of his warriors are there. Basically, kings and dragons have come to this competition of strength. Altigar, you said you were not participating. You were basically keeping the peace, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he kind of doesn't like the idea that a dragon's participating. <laughs> okay, so so he's he's he's. Oh, sure. It's fine when it's giants, but as soon as something bigger than a giant shows up, it's not fair. No, he he's, he wasn't participating. Period. Oh, okay. He was keeping the peace, making sure that these uh, that the bearded warriors are are not um, um, you know coming to blows or or um, or to bloodshed. Uh, Oberon stays behind at the uh, uh, at the drinking hall uh, to study his books. Lokrik is going to help. Uh, Uker oversee what's going on. Lemio, what are you doing? Sorry, man. It's oh fuck! This is so brutal. Your your connection is so brutal. Uh, okay. Move somewhere that has better signal. Uh, uh, I think I'm gonna find the business. Uh... <clears throat> okay. I think I know you're, you're going to find the business area. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think he, he said he was going to go up to Morphar Warlocks to start researching a spell. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, that was the offline chatter that happens throughout the week. Okay, Altigar. Um, Zongrin quickly makes a, makes a good show of... Uh, winning some leg wrestling competitions. Okay. <laughs> Basically, your legs are one, two, three, and your legs lock, yeah. and you just think you flip yeah. the other guy over. Okay. Uh, good thing that he's small, uh, or that he's medium size. See, Althagar couldn't participate in that, first of all. The, bo the mechanics wouldn't work, period. Right. Second, he'd crush the person under his thigh. <laughs> uh, give me a... Um, What would this be? You, you've got maxed out Bab, right? Uh, yes, he does. 
Give me a character level check. Okay. This is a, you're you're watching the dragon like just to see. Well, it's maxed out for his hit dice, but he's technically eleventh uh, okay. level with ten. So Bab basically. Yep. All right, Bab. Got a twenty-three. And what's your strength? Uh, s normally it's thirty-six. Okay. Um, you know that his this this guy's stronger than you. Okay. And it's somewhere between <clears throat> forty and fifty. Ooh. <laughs> Like, he almost broke guys' legs. Like, almost ripped them off. Okie ok ok doke. He, he won three champion... Like, he won sort of, like, three bouts of leg wrestling to kind of get into the standings. Like, it, it's a chaotic affair. You have no idea. Yeah. Uker's got some crazy board set up that only his chaotic <laughs> mind can kind of kind of track. Um... <laughs> Uh, he's over here, he's second place unless I want noodles, in which case <laughs> right <laughs> um, and it's just getting more kind of uh, 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 plonky as, <laughs> as things are going on um, yeah, if you, ever, if you ever get invited to a card game and someone says the word plonky don't play the card game you'll probably <laughs> okay. just have to get, get your money it's a card game where the rules just sort of get written as you go, and, and as you're learning, yeah. there's new things that are thrown in. Yeah, plonky is a good word. At least that's my word for it. Yeah, Zongren, Zongren is definitely um, inhumanly strong. Okay. Uh, Galleth, you've you've kind of gotten past the throwing stage. Uh, there are some folks that are that are in um, arm wrestling and uh, leg wrestling. Okay. Uh, that, that you are matched up against. Okay. Let's see here. Tell me what to roll, sir. <clears throat> I'm going to say if there's a 1 in 10 chance that you know the person that you're going to be against. Uh, nope. No one for the first bout and the next two bouts. Should you succeed? Shouldn't uh, Galath be really wary about having all these knights in one place? <laughs> okay, so arm uh, leg wrestling is probably a CMB check. Uh, probably. Okay. It's kind of like a like a almost like a wrestling grappling maneuver. Uh, let's see how many. Let's see what levels these guys are. All right. Okay, your first uh, your first competitor. I, I need three separate rolls of uh, uh, of CMB. Okay. <clears throat> Thirty five. Thirty five. Wow. Twenty five. Thirty three. Okay, so you win the first match, the second match, and the third match against uh, one guy in leg wrestling, uh, which brings you on to the next leg. Um, this, guy's, <laughs> this, this guy's pretty strong, although he's not as... Um, this next guy's pretty strong, he's just not as uh, babtastic. So the next competition, 12, 12, and 29... <laughs> think you can fail these unless you roll a bunch of ones. Okay, so Gallus <clears throat> is proving himself better than than other men in leg wrestling. Uh, and then the last guy is actually pretty strong. I rolled a d10, so he's got 10 bab. We'll say that he's a wrestler with a 14 strength, so he's at plus 16s. The last guy in this leg um, wrestling competition gets 19, 20, and 26. Oh, he rolled poor. Sort of uh, you, you won the first match, but then lost the second two matches. 
Hang up. Yeah. Are you mythic pointing any of this stuff, or? I was thinking about it, but I might mythic point that last one. Let's do that. Okay, so that's now twenty-seven. <laughs> All right, so you beat him by one. Okay, so so basically, <laughs> <laughs> you you applied your strength too soon. Um, and um, you managed to to plow through it. He he, he congratulates you afterwards, and and uh, um, this guy apparently hasn't lost at this yet. I haven't lost like that since I was a child. Goth gives him a handshake. <clears throat> <laughs> he actually raises your hand and yells "Aegis!" and a bunch of people yell "Aegis." This seems this festival of strength. Uh, it, is, it seems to be um, spreading the news uh, and goodwill of, um, uh, amongst the people of Valsen Saga. So Galith moves on after kind of winning uh, preliminary rounds of, uh, of tossing uh, cabers and then leg wrestling. You can see that Trud is, uh, it, Trud is arm wrestling people and, and winning. Um, let's see. Give me a percentile to see if there's anything odd that goes on. We'll say 20 and under, there might be a, a fight. No, nope. things, things seem to be going along uh, uh, pretty smooth. Okay, the next set of competitions. Um, Galath, you, you've, you've seemed to, by Uker's crazy board, um, gotten pretty far in the competition. King Trud is still in the competition, as so is Zongren. Um, Uker Uker has the competition kind of around this really big flat rock that that yeah he he seems to have have some tables and things set up on this flat rock and and uh, um, the the uh, the competition is is kind of all around the rock. The rock looks very unnatural, uh, and uh, Lokrik uh, reveals that Lemio helped Uker create this big flat stone slab. Um, there's something up, Uker's There's something. There's some surprise that Uker has, and he, he's like a boyish grin whenever he's near the uh, the big slab of rock. There are some lifting competitions. Zongrin is easily able to lift up immense amounts of weight. Um, when finally that day comes to uh, uh, comes to a close. King Trud wanders up to uh, to Altigar. <clears throat> Why aren't you competing? I'm a giant. Wouldn't be fair. No. <laughs> it's the festival of strength before the gods. You shouldn't hide from what you are. He looks at him. Some of them gods are gonna get to know me real well. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at you, starts laughing. Uh, definitely a bench open for you, my friend. I'll keep that in mind, your highness. Thank you. <laughs> if you ever get tired of these heroes of ages, it's a catchy name. Dragon slayers, the whole lot of them. I know, I was there for one. <laughs> <laughs> you did most of the damage for him. <laughs> All right, so he, he nods at that, learning that you're not afraid to hunt dragons. Uh, he seems to you hold... run up to them and you punch them in the face till they fall down. <laughs> <laughs> you giant fist them to the face. Mm. All right, then. Um, there's there's drinking in a more jovial atmosphere uh, back at the um, at the drinking hall um, that evening. Uh, Zongrin doesn't doesn't show his face at the drinking hall, perhaps um, giving you guys some space. But there but there is there is talk of how unnaturally strong he is, and there are some people that are that are now betting on him to win. Um, did did Uker leave bet against him? <laughs> yeah, did Uker leave notes about what, or Adam leave notes about what he wanted to do? 
Uh, he left some stuff in an email. Was it an email? Yeah. It wasn't technically what he wanted to do, but how he wanted the competition to go, I think. Yeah. And basically ends with him showing everybody up. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> you're great. You're first place. Can you do this? No, I didn't think so. I'm the strongest. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably the, the silly grin that Uker has during throughout the competition. Uh, let me just read here. It's like, here's your belt with world's strongest man. Why are the quotation marks around strongest? <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, or he gives him a prize that's a trophy that's so big only he can pick it up. <laughs> Yeah, I thought there was. Oh, yeah, there is there is a page that he created in the OneNote called Festival of Strength. <coughs> okay, um, the Festival of Strength continues. The uh, next day. Um, the number of people are whittling down rapidly, as you'd expect uh, kind of like a, a tiered uh, tournament to go. The High King, you notice that there's um, that evening, the castle is really lit up. Like there are a lot of, a lot of light coming out of many of the windows in the castle. Mm-hmm. It's not on fire. It's just there. There seem to be a lot of um, extra lanterns or extra uh, torches that are lit around around the um, around the castle. Perhaps the prospect of of shades and hell coming to collect souls <laughs> have made. Uh, have Maybe made, we would uh, like a few more lanterns. Exactly. Just one or two more candles, please. Um. The next day does bring a uh, competition to a head. Let's see who. Um, um, I'm going to roll a d20 for King Trud and a d20 for Zonthal. The two highest rolls will actually have to compete against each other today. So give me a roll, uh, Galath. You're still in the competition. <coughs> what am I? Uh, what am I rolling? <coughs> Just a d20 to see where where okay. you'll, en you'll encounter a named person. 18. Oh, it's Zonthal and Galath. Ooh. We'll be watching this one with interest. Yeah, there there are hundreds of people all crowded around this grand pavilion where right. where um uh where the heroes of Aegis and other other celebrity types in the city are watching. There is a uh, a stone table that has been set up. Uker basically wandered over and Put down the stone <laughs> table. Put it on the stone yeah. table. <laughs> yep. Well, Zonthal is there. He's in his armor. He he cracks his fingers a little bit and then puts his hand out. <clears throat> I will try not to break your arm. Full strength. <laughs> <clears throat> you shouldn't be so concerned about that. He pulls out his silver hand and clutches his fist a couple of times as if he's getting ready. Okay, I need to look up the bonuses for um, size increase on grapples. It's plus one for every size increase, I believe. So I think it's one for large, two for huge. It might actually be, it might actually double at like four for gargantuan. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just look it up. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Didn't you get some large person going for you, son? Want to be a filthy cheater? Yeah. Right, so he <laughs> loses four, but then he gains... Um, five, six... 
it's two. Okay. You can bow out now and save yourself some face. <clears throat> I'm only in this contest for fun. If I don't lose, I don't mind. Or if I don't win, I don't mind. Okay, he he puts out his right hand. Of course, your right hand is not your, your silvery hand, although he's looking at it. Yeah. A fabulous hand that you have there. Is that mithril? It is. <clears throat> Would you care to wager it? Why would I do such a thing? <laughs> There's a slight smirk. He puts on his other his his, his fleshly hand. Okay, he, he his his uh, his hand is a a steel vice. <laughs> you, have okay. a feeling, you have a feeling you're not going to be able to budge this man's arm. Okay. Very interesting choice of religion. I don't think it's fair to say that I chose, that I was chosen. Oh, but your religion was chosen. It had the right quality, I suppose. I would be careful. There's a time for caution and time for valor. Careful about your return. You speak of Melbourne? Yes. What do you know of it? I have not word for there for over a year now. Enough chit chat! Get to the arm wrestling! <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> Uker agrees. Ding! He, he hits. He hits a uh, a charm that they set up. What am I? Um, what am I rolling? So we're rolling CMB checks. Okay. Opposed CMBs, uh, and this guy has a minus doing... four for being smaller, and then a plus six for his strength. So it's a plus two. His CMB is one d twenty plus forty six. He gets a sixty four. Yeah. Okay. So I. I... Can't really do anything about that, but I'll, I'll still roll. Well, yeah, you could roll a twenty. Well, actually, no, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Just... Okay. Well, yeah, he he he's holding you there and continuing to chat. You can see Gallop. Hey, Gallop's face goes red. He's he's trying to push it. The guy's just cool as a cucumber. Your god was chosen. I don't follow your meaning. <clears throat> Above all the other gods of Nalbrin. What do you mean by that? <clears throat> he smirks and then just slowly brings your arm down. Almost like he let his arm fall. <clears throat> your hand is sore. <laughs> it's like it slammed into the table. Oh, best of three. Announces Uker. Let's <sighs> have a soft sigh. <laughs> oh, uh, it almost looks like Xanthal is going to yawn. Is this the best that you have? Yeah, it's definitely not fair that he's competing. There, there are Uker's rules. If Uker says it's okay, it's. Why don't we switch hands? Fair enough. Yeah, I'll put down his mithril hand. Clunk. There are some cultures that believe the left hand is the devil's hand. Mm -hmm. okay, and, wh and why should I care about what other cultures think about my gods? Ah. Everyone has their own belief. Just like they all have their own arseholes. An interesting perspective for a paladin. You could feel him squeezing your hand now and, and like 
there was like a slight grinding from your your mechanical magical. <laughs> no, there wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, yeah. It I was... doubt he has enough strength to get through hardness forty two. Hardness forty two. Yeah. Good. Yeah, my my well, legendary. Got the, arm, that's right. My legendary arm is ridiculously strong. 